Landa is a fractionalized real estate platform that's offering residential real estate opportunities to regular people at a pretty decent rate. The properties that they're offering are residential rental properties. For the most part, that's really, I think, where the best action is on these apps. I would stay away personally from the commercial real estate on these things. That's pretty iffy on these. But this is, I like their residential real estate offerings. They're not all perfect. There's a way to look at these that I think you should be looking at as opposed to other apps. But if you look at it properly, I think you could do pretty well on your returns. Now, first off, Land is, it's a mobile app. You can look at it on desktop, but it, they really want you on the mobile version. I'm going to show you the desktop app here a little bit so we can kind of see what's going on. But they really do want you to be doing this on mobile. It is pretty convenient. Like a lot of these apps, the way that it works is an LLC would buy the property. Then what they do is, in this case, they divide it up into 10,000 shares and they offer those for sale. The LLC is separate than Landa. The LLC owns the property, the LLC holds all the funds, the LLC for that property does all of this. And that's what you're buying into is the fractionalized shares of the LLC. They split the LLC up into, like I said, 10,000 shares, you're buying shares and that's what you participate in. Now, Landa, in you look at their documentation, they really don't have a plan to sell these properties. A lot of these platforms I've looked at have about a four or five year window that they say that they're gonna hold the properties and then sell them. There's a couple of the platforms I've looked at on my YouTube page that you're never going to get out of there. They say five to seven years. There's no exit plan because they've added too many fees. I've looked at the fee structure for Landa as much as I can. I've read their SEC filing. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of information on their fees. There's not a lot of information on the purchase. I've looked up some of the properties on Realtor.com and Zillow to kind of see what did they buy it for. They're not really clear on that. So really in this case, you guys, I'm going to say if you're investing in this platform, don't look at it as if you're buying real estate necessarily. Legally, you're buying shares of an LLC that owns real estate. But since there's no plan to sell these, technically what you're buying into is just the cash flow. So, you know, you're investing in the cash flow of a property. You're not going to be receiving many tax benefits other than your dividend. I, I don't think I think they take all of the tax benefits and they account for that before they send you your tax documents at the end of the year on the 1090. I think they use a 1099 DIV. So um, I think that the appreciation like a REIT is computated before that. So you're going to receive basically dividend income that you're taxed on. So one question I get is who can invest? Well, Landa is offered for anybody in the U.S. that's over 18. You don't have to be an accredited investor. That's awesome. Some of the platforms that I've looked at, you have to be an accredited investor, which means higher income and net worth. Now, a question is, is what happens if Landa goes out of business? Now, like all these other platforms I looked at, we kind of don't know what happens if they go out of business because they haven't. So if they go bankrupt, you know, kind of what happens? Well, they talk about it a little bit in their frequently asked questions, and I'll show you right here what they say. Each series, so each property is part of a series LLC that owns one property. Each series holds title to the property and does not share title with another series or its parent company, which is Landa. So that means that your series that you invest in, that LLC that you invest in that holds title to that property, it's exclusive. The title is held in the LLC, and you're the owners of that. Landa has nothing to do with that, okay? Number two, each series maintains its own books and records. Number three, each series maintains its bank account and does not hold money from any other series. Number four, each series has its mortgage, no cross-collateralization. So that's one thing I like about Landa is they're using leverage on these properties. They've got mortgages. So it's held within um, each series. It's mortgage is just for that one property. They all have mortgages covering multiple properties. Each series guarantees zero debts of another series. Great. There no, so if you buy a property on Jones Street, you're not carrying the debt or promising to cover the debt on Sally Street. Each series has its, has its own insurance policy, not part of an umbrella policy. Okay, great. So the problem here is, is what they say at the very bottom, and then that is in the event of a bankruptcy, the bankruptcy is managed by the bankruptcy court and we can't guarantee the outcome. So, you know, I think there's a little bit of risk there that if, you know, if they went bankrupt, they do a lot of diligence here to keep it out of that. But they're just saying, hey, we don't know what's going to happen. A bankruptcy judge could come in and say, hold on a minute. We're going to bring all these together. So there's a little bit of risk there I want you guys to be aware of. But it is what it is in real estate, and it's pretty much the same risk on all these platforms. Now, Landa is currently investing in seven markets. It says right here, Georgia, New York, Jacksonville, Orlando, Tampa, 
Charlotte and Birmingham. Now this right here is the front page of the marketplace. These are where the houses are. Um, the pictures of the houses and the short little you know thing here on just what the share price is and kind of what the share price has been doing. It's been like this one's going up or down. Now if you click right over on the filters, you can filter these properties you can see here. So I like to filter these. I want to look at, so when they have it, this says right here, IPO, that means when they first offer a property up for sale, it's not rented yet. They're kind of getting it into the system. Maybe it's rented, but they're not, it's not fully, let's say not a fully executed deal yet. They're just offering the shares. So in this case, you guys, I wouldn't buy anything they're offering the IPO on yet since you're only buying the income stream. I think buying into the IPO is trying to buy into the appreciation of the property. If you're thinking that way, um, trying to pick a marquee location because it's going to go up in value, I wouldn't do that on this platform, you guys. On this platform, they say they don't have an exit plan. They're holding these long term. So again, you're just looking at the income stream. stream. So I would recommend looking at properties that already have been bought and in the system for at least a year and they're receiving income, they have cash reserves or they're building them up, there's a little bit of property history and we can see what the return is and figure, hey, is this a good deal to invest into this cash flow? What's my return? So I would filter these by up here, you can see filter by trading and then I would filter by the ones that are currently leased and then I would pick single family houses. Let other people pick the multifamily and duplexes, maybe. It depends on your risk level. I personally like single family rentals, but again, I'm gonna look at three single family rentals here. But I'm going to have a little bias, I have to admit to. I pick single-family rentals because they have great appreciation. But they're also great for longer-term tenants. Single-family houses, just a nicer one in a nicer location. I would rather have that than just an apartment in a triplex. Unless you're talking exclusive levels on the triplex. But you don't see many of those. And I don't think that's what they're talking about here. So we're going to be looking just at the single-family rentals. So I picked this one here. The first one we're gonna look at is 303 Kelly's Walk. Here is the property front page. There's a few pictures and it looks fine. I like the look of this house. This is a rental house. I got like the front loading garage, not in an alley. Looks like that has a nice little yard. It's four bedroom, two bath, 1300 square feet. They say the market cap is 302. They probably got that from Zillow on the high end. So maybe 280, 1800 and set $37 a month is what they're renting it for. Now, looking right here, this is basically the share price over the last year. I sort by one year, and you can see it's gone up about a year ago, and it's been pretty steady ever since. I kind of like that. They're offering this right now. You can buy in at around $17.07 a share. So they get this share price by averaging the lower 10% of all the ones in the marketplace that are being offered for sale. So you guys, you might not be buying everything at exactly this price. They're really clear on that in their documentation. So right now, let's say $17 a share. You might be able to get a few shares above that. You might have to get a few shares above that. You might even get some share prices below that if you put a market order out there saying, hey, I'll buy, let's say, 20 shares right now at, let's say, you know, $15.75. Someone might be willing to liquidate that. You want to look at the marketplace and see what those sort of what buy orders are sitting out there if you can sit right above that and it still provides a better return by buying in at $17 maybe you want to do that strategy so I think this is the way to look at these properties you guys look at this May dividend right here on this property so this is what I like to look at their collected rent is $1,837 now the rest of these fees here are all fixed costs the loan payment 528 the insurance at 43, the monthly HOA at $10, the property taxes at 35, and the management fee management fee of 147. By the way, that's not a bad management fee on these, you guys. I do property management also with my company, and I can tell you that's just that's not a bad property management fee. So they're not soaking you on the fees. I can tell you that right here on the property management just from this. So the total dividend was $1,000.73, $73.13, okay? And you can see if you divide that by the 10,000 shares, so they divide, you know, the properties are usually offered in 10,000 shares. So divide that, that comes to 11 cents a share. Great. So let's do the math on this. So let's say you bought 100 shares at that $17. Your initial investment is $1,707. And let's say the monthly dividend was $10.73. That's actually what it worked out for when I did the math exactly on the monthly dividend was $10.73. So I'm looking over here at my calculations on the other computer. So the annual income of basically, um, if you owned 100 shares, would be $10.73 monthly. The annual on that would be $128.76. Now, if you had, you know, I just want to know the cash on cash return. We're not looking at the taxes. We're not looking at the appreciation. So if I invest $1,700 in this project, what's my cash on cash return based on the rents? Well, 
the cash on cash return is basically you take your annual income and you divide it by the cash that was invested and then multiply it by 100. So in this case, the annual income of $128.76, that's the monthly income times 12, divided by the $1,777 that you would have invested in, that's a 7.54% return. That's not a bad return, you guys, on real estate for basically um, compared to savings, compared to taking risks in other markets. I like this because those costs are fixed. So as long as, that's prop so as, long as that property is rented right now, those fixed costs gives you a 7.54% return. That is not bad. I know one platform I recommend is Ground Floor, where you're the lender lending to fix and flip people. I have a video about that. Good look at my channel if you want to watch that. That one they're offering, you know, they go between 8 and 14% return, which is also fantastic, but it's a different risk level because you're dealing with flippers. So this is just a steady state 7.54% return as long as this thing is being rented. Now, here's the next one that I looked at. It was 4085 Springvale Way. It's a four bedroom, two bath. It's being rented for $2,094 a month. And they're offering this at $14.44 a share, approximately, like I said. Now that I already showed you that graph, you don't need to look at the graph of the trend line. I just wanted to show you that, that you can see that. Really, I, like I said, you're buying the dividends and it's been rented for a while. So let's look at it on this property. So $2,094 in rent. You can see right here the loan payment is $630, $44 a month insurance, $29 HOA, $222 for property taxes. 167 for management fee. You can see I'm rounding up, you guys. Now, cash reserves, 146. And you can see down here their cash balance. I think that would be their reserve balance of $4,000. So they're building up their cash reserves. Maybe something happened, fine. So right now that cash reserves is coming out. So what's your cash on cash return if you invested right now while they're taking this money out for the cash reserves? What's your return? So 14, approximately $14 a share. Let's say you buy 100 shares. That would bring you to $1,443.90 would be your initial investment. Now, it says right here you've got a 0 0.09 per share dividend. So you're buying 100 shares. So let's figure this out. You have 0 0.09, so that's $9 a month in income on 100 shares. Okay, Times 12, that's $108 a year in income. $108 divided by your $1,443 initial investment gives you a 7.49% return. Again, you guys, that's a pretty heck of a decent return. I'd jump into that versus dropping my money into a savings account. But now look at this, though. This is something that even sweetens the pot. And this is why I would be, if I didn't invest in this property today, I would be watching this property. Because as soon as they drop having to save up those reserves, the financial picture looks even better. So remember I said that they were showing cash, they were building up their cash reserves by $146 a month. Now, when they fill their cash reserves, that comes out and the income on the property goes up and the dividend per share is going to go up. So I did the math on that. So if you take out the 146 and add it to the income and divide it by your shares, it brings the share price up from nine cents a share up to 10 cents a share. So multiply that by 12, you're going to have a $120 a year dividend on this property once they drop those cash reserves. That $120 divided by your $1,443 initial investment brings your cash on cash return up on this property to 8.32%. So if you didn't drop in and invest in this one now, but you were watching properties to invest in, I would watch this one. Maybe reach out to the company and ask them for more, more details if you can call the property management company, probably not, but find some details about can we get those cash or when are those cash reserves going to be done being paid off. Now, let me show you one that I wouldn't would not invest in and how I identify that as something not to touch. So look at this property, 4474 Highwood Park Drive. It's a four bedroom, two bath that's running for $1,260 a month. And it looks pretty good from these pictures. It looks like a newer, you know, built in 2005. So it's a little bit contemporary townhome with a front loading garage has a little back area back here. They're offering this for $11.50 a share. So like I said on the others, this drop right into that dividend and it's just look at those numbers. All right, so they're collecting rent at $1,260 a month, fixed rent. Here's the fixed cost, loan 477, insurance $30, HOA 150, property taxes 163, management fee 100, cash reserves at $88, that brings the dividend down to $249 this month. And these are all fixed costs, you guys, except for that cash reserves. The rest of these are fixed costs. Now, when I did the math, you take this $249 of the dividend and divide it by the 10,000 shares. 
This is a little deceptive up here, you guys. It says the dividend is 0 .0, so two cents a share. It's actually two dollar. It's point zero two five cents a share is actually what the dividend really is. So you multiply that times. Let's say you bought a hundred shares. So eleven dollars and fifty cents a share. Let's say you bought a hundred shares. That would be eleven hundred and fifty dollars. So your hundred shares at two dollar at that point zero two five is two dollars and fifty cents a month times twelve would be thirty dollars in a year. Okay. $30 divided by $1,150 is a 2.61% cash on cash return. I would avoid this property, you guys. That's a horrible return. These costs are fixed except for those cash reserves. And let's just look at it when they pay off those cash reserves. At some point, they'll stop reducing this monthly dividend or the monthly, yeah, by the cash reserves. Add it to that. That's going to bring it up to $3 or point. 0337 i did the math on that brings up to 0 0.0337 if you add the cash reserves back in so that's three so for your 100 shares that's three dollars and 37 cents per month times 12 is forty dollars and 44 cents forty dollars and 44 cents divided by 1150 dollars is a 3.52 percent cash on cash return so you can see what i'm saying right here you guys that's not going to get any better for this property this property that's why if you bought in on this property when they first offered it you might not see it's going to have that bad cash return so by looking at this right here you can see there's nothing better this property is not going to get any better for these guys they're not going to have an exit strategy for an appreciation gain so like i said you're buying the monthly cash flow 3.52%. You guys, if I had shares in this property, I would absolutely put those on the market, dump them, and try and buy into one of the other properties I showed you. That's the way you want to look at these properties, is look at the cash on cash return. So take your monthly dividend, multiply it by 12 to get your yearly dividend, and whatever that number is, divide it by the amount you invested, in, and they'll tell you your cash on cash return. If you can get better than 7%, you guys, that's a pretty good investment in real estate right there without actually owning the property and taking the risk of management and doing all that on your own. A lot of these platforms, I mean, maybe they're not great if you are an experienced investor and you've got five or six properties that you're already investing in. You have a lot of money. You can go flip a house. You can go buy something in your neighborhood, in your market, or in another market. I think these platforms, so maybe that's not the best for that guy. I still think it's a pretty good place for that guy to put some of his dividends from his other investments just as a passive investment scheme. But for just a regular person that wants to get into real estate investing, this is the way to participate. No one cares about your credit. No one cares about your income. No one cares what your dog looks like. They, If you were 18 and can connect a bank account and you have to show your driver's license for you know KYC for Know Your Customer, nothing's anonymous. Then you can be participating and investing in real estate, start making some returns, let this stuff accumulate. I would take those monthly cash returns, build them up in the, in the, you know, basically on your account within the app and just take that and roll it into additional properties. Also, I would highly consider dropping buy orders in, like I said earlier, at prices just above the other buy orders, but maybe it's below what the market price of the property is and let that sit there for a few weeks and see if people pick those up. I did look at the marketplace. You know, the activity monthly is not huge. You're not talking, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars per month per property changing hands. You're talking hundreds of dollars per month in properties changing hands. Maybe a little bit, maybe a thousand a month. I doubt that. The ones I looked at, I was seeing maybe 20 transactions a month for a couple shares each. So, you know, if you're buying into this, figure you're going to be holding this long term. Don't look for a quick exit. If you're a crypto bro and you're looking for a thousand next to your money, this isn't the channel or the space for that. Go look at virtual real estate. But here, you guys, I think that's the best you're going to get. If you want to watch a video on the other platforms I talked about, right here is going to be the video on ground floor where you're the where you're the lender. And right here is going to be a, a video on Lofty, which is similar to Landa, but it's just doing it a little bit different with a little bit more due diligence. Check them both out.